Catalytic hydrogenation is an alkene addition reaction. In this reaction, we are adding a molecule of H2 to our alkene. And this is actually a really simple reaction. So we're going to take our original alkene, all of the things that were originally attached to it, and then we are simply going to add the H2 molecule. One hydrogen goes to each carbon of the alkene. That's it. As you can tell from the name, this reaction does require a catalyst. The formula of the catalyst is always written in this position underneath the arrow. The catalyst is going to go right here. And there are several different catalysts that we can use for this reaction. Platinum, PT, palladium, PD, or nickel. Those are the three most common catalysts that we will use on paper. And so when you see this reaction written out, you'll just see any one of these three metals written underneath the arrow, like let's say palladium under the arrow, like that. Uh, and so that's pretty much all there is to this reaction. Let's talk a little bit about the conditions of the reaction. They are pretty straightforward. And then we'll look at a couple examples. So first of all, Markovnikov's rule doesn't apply to this reaction. We use Markovnikov's rule to help us predict where a hydrogen will go in an addition reaction. And in this particular reaction, because both carbons are getting a hydrogen, we don't need to have a rule to help us decide where the hydrogen will go. Uh, there is no car uh, carbocation formed in this reaction, which means that we have no rearrangement of our carbon skeleton, which is nice. No changes to the carbon skeleton. And also, this reaction does have syn addition of the two hydrogens. Now, in a lot of cases, even though this is a syn addition reaction, in a lot of cases, that ends up being irrelevant to the products of the reaction. Let's take a look at a couple of examples and um, we will see how the syn addition in this case is not as tricky as it is for hydroboration oxidation. So here's our first example. We have this alkene, we're going to do hydrogenation. Here is our catalyst. We know that there's going to be no change at all to the carbon skeleton. So let's just start by etching out that carbon skeleton and identifying the two hydrogens that we're working with, which are, excuse me, the two carbons that we're working with, which are these guys right here. And in the hydrogenation reaction, we're simply adding hydrogens to those two carbons. But since we're drawing a line structure, in a line structure, we typically don't even draw hydrogens that are added to carbons. It isn't even necessary for us to write these hydrogens in. And in fact, if you just chose to write those two hydrogen in, hydrogens in like that, that would be very confusing to me, at least, because I would say, well, what's going on with this carbon right here? I can see that you've taken the time to draw one, two, three bonds. What's that fourth bond? Is it a bond to a hydrogen? Is that supposed to be a carbocation? Is there a lone pair there? I don't know. Um, so since we're doing this with a line structure, let's not draw any of those hydrogens in at all. We're not drawing these hydrogens here, and maybe this is just the product of the reaction. Before we get too excited and say, ooh, we're done, that was easy, remember that we still have to take a look at those carbons that we worked with, the carbons that we worked on, and ask ourselves, did either of those carbons become chiral? Because if either of those carbons became chiral, then we've got to start thinking about the syn addition concept. So let's look at this carbon. Oops. Let's look at this carbon right here. It has a methyl group. It has two ethyl groups. Because it has two identical groups, this carbon is achiral. And what about this carbon? This carbon has two hydrogens. So this carbon is achiral as well. That means that this is the product of this reaction, the one and only product of the reaction. No chiral carbons, no stereochemistry, one thing to draw and nothing to worry about. That's really nice. Let's take a look at this reaction down here. So since we know that we have no rearrangement, let's just draw out our carbon skeleton. And let's take a look at the two carbons that we're working with. And since this is hydrogenation, that means that we are going to be adding hydrogens to those carbons. But since we're dealing with a line structure, let's not write those hydrogens in. Let's also ask ourselves for these two carbons, did either one of them become chiral? This carbon has two hydrogens on it. 
this carbon has three hydrogens on it, neither of those are chiral. So again, this is, this is it. That's done. Now that's not really, um, those are both not great examples because I'm not giving you an opportunity to practice how to uh, navigate this if we have a chiral carbon. So let's do one more example. Let's do this one right here. Okay, so start by drawing out the carbon skeleton and find the carbons that we're working on. We're going to be adding hydrogens to those carbons, but we're not going to draw the hydrogens in because we're dealing with a line structure. All that we're doing right now is asking ourselves, are either one of these carbons chiral? This carbon right here, because it has two methyl groups, is achiral. But this carbon right here, which has an ethyl, a methyl, and an isopropyl, that carbon is chiral. When there's only one chiral carbon in a molecule, all that you have to do is show the two possibilities for chirality for that one particular carbon. So again, the whole sin and anti thing is, again, not even an issue. Because we only have one chiral carbon, we only need to draw one possibility for stereochemistry. So I guess, again, I've given you another example that's not super helpful. Let me see if I can come up with one that's even harder. So let's try... Let's try this. All right, so very similar molecule. And let's draw out our carbon skeleton. And our hydrogens have been added to these two carbons right here. And so now we're asking ourselves, are these two carbons that we worked on, did they become chiral? And we already know that this carbon right here became chiral. We've already talked about that in this example here. So have we managed to make this carbon chiral? It has a chlorine, a methyl, this secbutyl group. So this carbon is chiral as well. Now, when both of the carbons are chiral in the molecule, this is where things will get a little bit trickier. And the strategy that I use is to go back to the original alkene, pick two groups that are on the same side of the double bond, two things that are cis to each other, and let's say we make them both wedges. So we'll make both of them wedges. And the other two groups that are cis to each other will make both of those dashes. And again, it's not going to matter which one you choose to make the wedge and which you choose to make the dash. And then we will um, keep in mind that we're going to have two products here. So draw a second version, keeping your wedges and your dashes in the same spot. And for one molecule, we're going to draw our hydrogens sticking down. And for the other molecule, we'll draw those hydrogens sticking up. And those are the two products, the two enantiomers of this reaction. Now, when you're filling those hydrogens into this product, it's really, really important that you draw them exactly the way that I did. So they're going to be directly side by side. You're not going to be drawing a hydrogen over here, um, not ever in between a wedge and a dash. That's a super no-no. So you'll see that I've got them hugging together in that same little spot in between the two wedges or in between the two dashes. And so this would be the most complicated possible type of, of hydrogenation, catalytic hydrogenation reaction that you might encounter.